Hi again. Okay, so I just regaled to you my my recovery story, I guess, of the day of operation, which was Thursday. Um, and now I can tell you all about um, what's been happening since then. So as I'm recording this today, it's a little over 72 hours since the day of surgery. Um, it's Sunday. And um, ooh, I can show you the fun stuff that I've been doing since then, which is not much. I sleep in this. Which is an awesome, this thing is awesome. Um, I was afraid that they were going to give me those shield things that you tape over your eyes. They look real Return of the Fly-like. Um, whatever, you do, you do what you have to do because you don't want to touch your eyes. You don't want to accidentally hit them or rub them when you're sleeping. So I got these, which I think are awesome. They are like flexi safety glasses with a fabric band and they're foam padded. So they just like rest on your face. And you get to sleep like that, like a champ. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. They're really cool. I think they're fine. I'm definitely going to keep them. Um, and I think I have to wear that for at least a week. Um, oh, okay. So, got home, slept, ate dinner, slept some more, wake up the next morning. Really uncomfortable the next morning, especially that right eye still. It's just, like, tearing. It's bugging me. Left eyes? All right. Um... The drops that I'm on are like a steroid, probably an, um, like an antibacterial one uh, or an antibiotic one, um, uh, the artificial tears, um, and uh, oh, like a Tylenol for the eye. That is, that's an optional one if I want to take it. So I was taking, the, taking all of them. Um, these drops I got are they just the supplemental artificial tears. Um, I got them, you can get them at your regular pharmacy drugstore. I got mine at Target because I had a gift card. Um, and they tell you to make sure to get the preservative free ones. Um, and a lot, oftentimes they will come in these single vials. So they're really helpful. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm on this regimen and I'm crying my little eye out and I'm wondering, all right. And, and I've heard, I heard from these videos that I've watched, like that'll happen to some people. Maybe one eye heals differently than the other eye. And I was, I was prepared for that. Um, vision's not great. And, and I was prepared for that too. And I think one of the things that people need to really take away from PRK, the tagline should be PRK. It's not LASIK. So you might've had friends or people that you watch videos of that say, I got LASIK two days later, 2020 vision, everything's awesome, blah, blah, blah. But if you're like me and just can't stand that idea of having that flap incision, or if you know your corneas are too thin, there's some sort of physical reason that you can't get LASIK, and you get the PRK, just understand it's not going to be it's not going to be 2020 vision the day after. You're probably going to be uncomfortable. I mean, this is day three for me, and I can't. I think I'm still probably legally blind, um, which I did find out. I had a 24 hour appointment. So on Friday I go back and um, she has me read some of the chart of what I can read and I am legally blind still on Friday. And it's still got that watery, blurry um, vision for me. And I'm telling her about the right eye and she takes a look at the cont she takes a look at my eyes and she's looking and she's like, oh, well, I think that one's in inside out. And I was like, that would make a lot of sense because it's uncomfortable and it feels a million times different than the left eye. So she put numbing drops in both eyes again, and then she used these jeweler's tongs to remove the contact, and then she replaced it. And the reason why she did the tongs, she said to me, is because, you know, obviously your eyes just went through, a, my eyes just went through this laser blasting trauma, and they don't want pressure applied to the eye, nor do they want to drag something across the eye. So she just lifted it up, and then she put another one back on. And guess what? Feels great. Uh, so that, that was awesome that like my problem was solved, um, that very next day. So, um, again, all I've been doing is chilling out because, um, while I am not in pain, it is uncomfortable at times and I can feel like irritation. It feels like there's stuff in my eye. Um, by the way, when the one eye was, the contact was inside out, the bandage contact, by the way, they put that in there to cover that layer, um, to give a little bit of added protection. It felt like I was blinking over a nickel. That's how foreign of an object it felt. 
over my eye, just like, uh, my eyes gotta go boop, 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 boop. Um, and then <laughs> totally not the case anymore. But, um, yeah, so what's it feel like? It, I'm tired and it, it's tiring to have my eyes open and I am very light sensitive. So obviously I've got my awesome sunglasses. Um, and I'm, I'm very cautious because they tell you, you do not, you're not touching your eyes. You're not going near your eyes. Um, the only thing that's going near your eyes are the drops, but they don't want you washing your face. They don't want you sweating or exercising. So you're, you know, they don't want the sweat dripping into your eyes. Um, pretty much anything going into your eyes. No, for like, depending on the activity, a week to a month. So I'm supposed to avoid pools, saunas, um, even like a shower. Uh, and certainly they want me like out of the ocean for like a month at least. Um, cause they don't want things to get in there and possibly infect your eye. So, um, so yeah. So, and the way my doctor described it is you're, you, you don't want to touch anything in your socket. So anything that's underneath these awesome lenses is hands off. Um, so just let it cry when the drops come and then you can wipe it across your cheek. But if it's there, you just got to let it, got to let it hang out, crust over or whatever. Um, so, you know, just chilling out and letting your eyes rest can actually be really pretty tiring and kind of boring. So if you have something to do to entertain yourself in the meantime, I recommend that like listening to audiobooks, uh, listening to music. I played around on a keyboard for a little bit. Um, but you can't, like, I can't really watch TV. I can't, I certainly cannot use the computer. I can't really use this phone at all. I'm having my husband help me, like, go through my emails and stuff. So if you have somebody around to help you, that's awesome. Um, also, I do not really recommend this surgery to somebody who's just, like, moved into a new place because half the stuff I've been doing has been reliant solely on my muscle memory and knowing where stuff is and getting around that way in this house that I've lived in for over 10 years. So, you know, that's just a little pro tip. And uh, with the lights, like, I have unscrewed half of the lights in their fixtures. Uh, as I've noticed, they're bugging me. So that's, those are just my tips for now. All right, so I'm going to stop it right here and... If you want more advice, I have another video coming up, but I don't want to keep these too long. So, cool.